a funny story. One day, Dr. Narojan took my car. You know, I was using my car. And uh, my car says super fast. So, in the back, the place. And so he went there to get a Mexican. This is when he was in Toronto. He stopped over for a Mexican to pick up some Mexican food. And some kids come running and they knocked the window. And the window was a little bit dark. They knocked and Demar Rojan opened the window and they said, Oh, I'm sorry, we thought it was super friend. And they left. So next day, he <laughs> calls me and says, Now I ain't using your car anymore, man, because people want picture with you and don't don't with me. To the On the Ball Podcast. <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? What's going on, ballers? And welcome to another episode of the Beyond the Ball podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones. And as you all know, the focus of this show, or if this is your first time, the focus of this show is to focus on stories, strategies, and successes to help student athletes succeed beyond their degree. So if, if you're tuning in wherever you are, if you're on uh, Apple or uh, you're on Spotify or even on YouTube, I would encourage you to make sure you subscribe to the podcast uh, because there's going to be a lot of value added today as with every episode. So make sure that you subscribe and stay locked in for all the newest updates and everything like that. Now, without further ado, I'm excited to bring forth uh, to today's guest because uh, man, this gentleman, I, I, I've just seen him all over. It seems like I've seen him all over the place. And, and, and I really just love the energy that he brings because he's he's an ambassador for the Toronto Raptors. And he's also known as the one and only as super fan. So I want to welcome to the to the Beyond the Ball podcast, Mr. Na Batia. How are we hey. doing today? Thank you very much. I'm doing well. Thank you. And thank you for having me on your show. Definitely excited to have you here today and uh, definitely just grateful for grateful for the opportunity, um, because like, like I said before, you know, I've, I've seen you all over the place, just seeing you doing doing amazing things and creating change. So if this is somebody's first time or their first interaction with you, please just take a second and, and just uh, give the people a little snapshot of, of who you are. Well, I'm Raptors. I'm called Raptors super fan. And uh, my name is now Batia. And I tell you, I'm one blessed of a guy. I came to Canada in 1984 uh, when we were getting, uh, when there was a genocide against the Sikhs in India. I moved to Canada with my wife and uh, uh, finding a job has not been easy, even though my education is mechanical engineer, but uh, it has not been easy. But, uh, you know, I had a lot of speed bumps like anybody, but I've been able to take care of those speed bumps, remove those speed bumps. And here today, I am uh, uh, 36 years uh, uh, later. I'm really blessed with everything. And I think I'm blessed that I don't deserve some of the things which God has given to me. Yeah, yeah. So, super fan. Yes, sir. When, when did this love for, for, the, for the Raptors re really start and, and why? Well, let me tell you that. Let me take you back then. In uh, 1984, I arrived. First 11 years, I worked very hard as an immigrant, you know. I was a janitor. I was a landscaper. And then finally, I became a car salesman in a place. And boy, what a my first day at new job was in 84. When I entered the showroom, I was called all kind of names, you know. I was called uh, a towel head. I was called a diaper head. I was called Packy. I was called so many names, but that rather than discouraging me, motivated me. And I said, Lord, help me out. And I got to be better than good if I want to survive in this environment. And without complaining, I went on the floor to sell the cars and I sold 127 cars in three months, which was a record then. It still is a record now. Now I became comfortable slowly. In 1995, I had a home, I had a cars, you know, I had a good job. And, uh, you know, I, I, and the Raptors came to Toronto. I said, I'm going to try this exciting game, which I had seen on the television before. I said, I'm going to try with the two seats. And if I don't like it, I'm not going to renew it next season. But very first day, November 3rd, 1995, I go to the game. And I tell you, this is the fastest game on earth. 
basketball is the most entertaining game on the earth and i fell in love 25 years later i've never missed a raptor game never been late never left a game early and in 98-99 the hall of famer isaiah thomas gave me the title of raptor super fan and you know what rest is not history we won the championship in 2019 and uh, was the very first fan who's a non-player to be the grand marshal of the biggest parade any sports had we had two and a half million people on the street we had seven million people digitally and then on october 22nd 19, 2019 a, another first thing happened in the history of sports of any sports no a non-player getting a same ring as the players. And that's what I got from the Raptors organization. So God was good. And I tell you, the another one, it was not just there. Then last week, May the 15th weekend, I was blessed into the honor, into the Hall of Fame as the first non-player as a fan i was blessed and made a history by being into the honored into the hall of fame and getting the hall of fame ring so all these things i'm telling you is not possible no no fan can dream but god gave it to me and thank you almighty and i'm carrying everybody in the hall of fame along the people who love basketball the raptors fan and the rap and the basketball fans you guys are in with me in the Hall of Fame sport, uh, Super Fan Gallery. Hmm. Wow. 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 You get the championship ring. You get the Hall of Fame ring. Wow. Hmm. And the, what? What's it like? Because I because because everything you say you you say you said so much. I want I want to take some time to unpack it. So okay. when when you first were 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 just in the position to where like you said, you were at the dealership. And then while being at that dealership, people were calling you all different types of names and different things like that, being disrespectful. How did you like, how did you take the courage to, to stay there and continue just to show up every day, knowing that people did not want you to be there? Well, faith is Sikh. I belong to the Sikh religion. And we have a lot of patience. We are very strong inside. And everybody knows that when you see a Sikh, that they're a strong people. And always, whenever somebody does that, tries to knock down us by verbal abuses, it's okay. We are, we take it, but we don't, uh, you know, stand there. So in this particular case, when they verbally abused me, I took it in, but it motivated. You know, I, I, it motivated me to show them. And you know what? In three months, all these guys who were calling me names, became my friends. I was helping them to close the deals. So we changed their perceptions. And let me tell you, God makes everybody with love. It's the human being around and the environment which puts the hatred into it. If somebody can put hate into someone, I think we should try to put love into that. And in the end, love is going to win. That's my experience. Mm, wow. Patience and love that that's oh man pa patience is one of those things that you definitely you, you definitely get get tried and you know it has to be built up over time and growing and it's not easy it's not easy when somebody calls you something of course you start blood starts boiling you take a deep breath because let me tell you if I have argued on the very first day and I have stories like that the real stories like that hundreds of them hundreds of them you think I would be sitting in front of you today on this call and talking about it? You will be talking to me. You think today would I be in the uh, as a honorary in the Hall of Fame? No. When people go low, we go high. Mm. Yeah. So good. Yeah, that's good. I mean, and and I and I, and I think that right there speaks to how you've been able to not only just be successful within business, but, but also, you know, e even doing some of the philanthropy work that you do, because I, I know you're probably not, not going to say it, but I want to, I want to bring it out, mm -hmm. but you know, the, j just, just the time and the money that you invest to, to allow the opportunity for, you know, for, for other kids and for other immigrants to be able to, you know, have the joy that you have 
j just around the game of basketball. Can you talk a little bit more about that, super fan? Yes, you know, I'm going to tell you that I am going to be, I'm really best. First of all, I want to make sure everybody understands that I got more than I deserve. But it's almighty given me and I'm taking it, okay? So, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, about, I would say, about four or five years ago, I said, you know, now I got to start. I was doing little things here and there for the last 10, 15 years. But then four or five years ago, I said, you know, we have to start, uh, you know, as you start getting older, you want to give back because you know you ain't taking nothing with you. So you start working on that. So four years ago, I became the global ambassador for one of the biggest Christian organization. Yes, I'm not a Christian, but I became the global ambassador for a Christian organization called World Vision. And let me salute them. They are the best charity organization I have seen in my life. They reach out to the kids. And my purpose in life is to reach out and impact the kids, make their life better and give them the hope. So they were doing a project where they needed uh, um, thousands of dollars to build five schools. They wanted to build 135 washrooms so that girls can go to school continue their education because there's no washrooms in the schools which me and you and everybody here in north america take it as granted but there are thousands of kids who cannot go to school especially the girls because there's no washrooms in the school till they are 11 year old they go to the washroom behind the bush and the trees so at the age of 11 when their period starts they stop going to school and at the age of 12, 13, they get married or they are forced to get married and then they have kids. So kids at the age of 14 having kids is a sin and crime. I wanted to, I partnered with World Vision to stop that. So we built the washrooms there and we just completed that project about a few months ago. And now thousands of girls are going to school there and they're going to be the world changer. But in the next two months, we are starting another very big project, bigger than that in some other part of a poor neighborhood. So this is what I do. To me, it doesn't matter if somebody is a Christian, Hindu, Muslim, black, white, brown, whatever they are. Deep inside, we are all the same. 99.99% we are all the same deep inside. I might be wearing turban, you might be wearing a hat, some girl might be wearing a hijab. Doesn't matter. Inside, God has made all the same. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Just just so that every, every everybody is aware, j just in regards to your turban, what 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 does your turban symbolize? Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, I belong to Sikh faith, and in Sikh faith, we don't cut hair. So my beard is long, but I have pressed it and tied it up, looking tidy. Our my hair is long, but and most of the basketball players who come to Toronto, they know that. Because when they talk to me, I explain them. So we wear a turban in order to keep our hair under, under their neat and clean. So turban is like our crown for us. And uh, we, we wear this bangle. And uh, that's a sign that we belong to Sikh faith. And, you know, basically the Sikh faith all is a very open-minded religion. They are always helping the other people. During the COVID, it was the Sikh community in New York, in Houston, in California. Everywhere they were helping to make the hot meals to serve. One thing about the Sikh faith, everybody is watching. I want to let you know our morning prayers says, Nanak Nam Chardi Kala Tere Pane Ka Bhala. I was saying that in Punjabi. I'm going to translate that. It means we ask for happiness, healthiness, and wellness for everybody on this earth irrespective of color, religion, faith, or gender. That's what we do our first prayer in the morning. And that gives you a lot of strength. So we are basically for everyone. And uh, yes, we look different, but deep inside, we are all the same. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for, for, for just, just sharing a little bit about that and just, just a little bit about your faith, just so you know yeah. that, just like you said, we can begin to understand and begin to see that 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 we're a lot more alike and we're being people then 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 we're different and i think that creates a great opportunity for us to connect on a deeper level yes i think that's very important and you know 
here in Toronto, in Canada, I've been able to do that. What I do is every new year of the Sikhs, which is on the 13th of April, I bring thousands of kids from black community, from white community, Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, Jaini, everybody. I bring the kids there and I make them sit together to watch the game. And how beautiful it is to see the kids 10 to 15 year old, you know, cheering for one thing. They don't care if somebody is a Sikh, they don't see it. They see that we are all cheering for the same. So that's what I've been doing for 20 years. And now, if you ever see a Raptors game 20 years later, all those 10 to 15 year old kids have grown up. They have a well paid job and they are a season holder at the Raptors game. And that's how we are integrating everybody together. And I think you in the south of our border need to do that also. Mm. Yeah, I saw you said that it's your it, it's your life mission to bring people together. Yes. Has, has that has that always been been just the, the 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 train of thought that you've had and the belief that you have, or where did that come from? That came from my mother. I when I was young, when I was uh, growing up, but that also comes with my faith that respect everybody. You know, people ask me so many times, hey, how come you sold 127 cars in three months in the new country? How come you know you are so successful, guys? It's not me. It's not a rocket science. Treat people like you want to be treated yourself. It happens. It comes. Success comes. Happiness comes. And also one thing, there is a more happiness in giving than taking. Mark my words on it. Experience that. And that's what we do as a Sikh. Mm. Why do you think that's so di why, why do you think that's such a difficult concept sometimes for people to to connect for themselves like and, and the reason i'm asking that is because i know in the states you know the, o over on this side in the united states that a, a lot of times you know we're thinking of making sure that we get what we want first and then mm -hmm. if there's enough for other people then, then we'll get to them but we have to get what's ours first you know what i think uh, there is so much strength in giving there is so much strength in diversity you know i go to all the arenas i go to you know philadelphia is one arena i've been to dallas uh, you know uh, uh, to the dallas maverick game also i've gone to every most almost every arena and you know philadelphia is considered to be a very rough and tough arena because anybody wearing another shirt or looking different they 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 get put you through the rough time they they throw beer on you they spit on you and all that and that's you know that's the thing which is a fact about philadelphia but i tell you i'm going to philadelphia year after year after year now and i get the most love i have two three hundred people standing in the line to take a picture with me and giving me a hug yes at some time if somebody from the stands calls me some name there are other people who jump on it Take care of it. I don't have to do anything. So what I'm trying to tell you, we are we are coming better. We are getting better, but we got to get much better. Here in Canada, we have done a pretty decent job, but more has to be done. But south of the border, we have to do a lot of job. And I salute NBA. I salute NBA. I salute the Basketball Hall of Fame. They are such an inclusive organizations, especially NBA. And they are always on the right side of the course. And they are the leader in making, taking the lead in making the decisions. I salute them. I'm so proud that I am involved with NBA. Certainly, certainly. So now I, I want to I talk a little bit about, about your foundation. Because when, 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 did, when did the foundation get started? And then what, what when was it for you to say, okay, it, it's time for us to... To, to do what we've been continuing to do, but now let's expand the platform and now let's really get the message out. Yes, that's what exactly happened. For last 10, 12 years, I used to do little by little, you know, whatever a little businessman like that, like me can do. I will take kids to the games, I will do that. And the reason I used to take kids to the games, I want to tell them, guys, you can be here every game, work hard, work honestly. And uh, I, I inspire them. And I tell them I had a lot of strikes against me when I first came. But you guys are born here, man. You're Canadian. And you can 
you are better equipped than I was ever. But my goal is to bring everybody together on there. But the foundation then in two years ago, two and a half years ago, I said we got to you know, do it more than what we, we have been doing. And in order to do that, I have to have a foundation and have the people involved. And uh, I was blessed to have a right manager for me, Rinku Guy, whom uh, you have been in touch with. He took over the uh, hem and said, I'm going to take care of it. And he understands what we want to do. And now our foundation is uh, building basketball courts here in Toronto in the tough neighborhood so that the kids don't come with the gangs, drugs, and uh, and guns and all that they play put their energy toward the game of basketball and then we are doing with the world vision like i just explained making the washroom for the girls wow 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 i mean i, I think that's really amazing with, with world vision and then on the other side just like you said with basketball because i believe that basketball you know really brings people together just, just i think i think that's one thing that's great about sports i think that's one thing that's great about food because, you know, we all can sit down and have a meal together and nobody's going to fight while we're eating and while we're yeah. breaking bread. So I, I think yeah. that's, that's really amazing. Uh, I think that's what it is, you know, and uh, I think we should use the sports to do that, to bring us all together. And I'm going to continue doing my part on it because there is a purpose that has put all of us on this earth and we should continue. And uh, I'm going to continue till my last breath. That's what my mission, to bring the world together, irrespective of the color, faith, religion, or gender. And I'm going to continue doing that. Mm. Wow, wow. Okay, now I want to take, I want to take a slight, slight pivot now, because I, you know, just, just seeing the pictures of, of you, seeing pictures with, 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 with you and, and seeing pictures with, with you and Drake, and it's just like, how does it feel now for, for you to be somebody who, who's recognized you know, as, as as super fan, and you know, you're you're a you're a fan favorite as well. So now, what 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 does that feel like for you being in this limelight in this way? It's amazing. I tell you something. It's so amazing, and I'm so blessed. I can give you example. When I was the grand marshal of the sports parade when we won the championship, I tell you, when I was there, the leading all the players and everybody, and people cheering MVP, super fan. I mean, this is amazing. I'm not a player. I mean, and getting all the love, and it's just a, just an amazing. Whenever Vince Carter, who my one of my favorite Raptors, one of my favorite human beings, you know, because he has given me uh, sort of the inspiration to love basketball with his game and with his actions. Uh, you know, he tells me, he says, "Now you're more popular than I am now." You know, and all that. But people, Demar Derozan says the same thing. I'm going to share a story with you, a funny story. One day, Demar Derozan took my car. You know, I was using my car, and uh, my car says "Super Fan." So in the back, the plates, and so he went there with a Mexican. This is when he was in Toronto. He stopped over for a Mexican to pick up some Mexican food, and some kids come running, and they knocked the window, and the window was a little bit dark. They knocked, and Demar Derozan opened the window, and they said, "Oh." I'm sorry, we thought it was super fan, and they left. So next day, he calls me and says, now nah, I ain't using your car anymore, man, because people want picture with you and don't, don't with me, not with me. And, you know, so I have so many stories like that, little stories, and uh, the love people give me. Yeah, yeah. So talk, talking about the, like, like just the love and the recognition, uh, you know, that, that, that people have, have shown you, I, you know, out in out in Toronto and even elsewhere with now you being in, inducted as, as an honoree in, into the Hall of Fame. I, I, want, I want you just to talk a little bit about a little bit about your speech, because I, I heard your speech. I saw your speech and, 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 it, and it was really, really touching for those who haven't heard it yet. I, I want to just you just I want to just talk a little bit about that because it really it really touched me. It, it really touched me. Well, basically, you know, I wanted to thank uh, Jerry Colangelo from the Hall of Fame. I wanted to thank Adam Silver, Commissioner and Deputy Commissioner uh, Mark Tatum. I wanted to thank uh, Isaiah Thomas, the Hall of Famer himself. I wanted to thank the Raptors. I wanted to thank because you know what? I'm a, I'm not a player, but they have put me in the best building of basketball in the world, and they have put my, you know, 
I'm, I, I'm just emotional about that because without that, and I told everybody, I said, look, I'm taking all the fans along with the basketball fans and the Raptor fans, everybody in the Hall of Fame with me. And what a beautiful job they've done a gallery there with the, you know, my chair from the Raptors, my jersey, original jersey, and my, uh, the replica of this thing, my bubble head, and then my turban. This turban is going to be installed there forever now. Every year, 250,000 people go pay $25 to the Hall of Fame. It's like a museum. They go, and now they're going to see this, and they're going to see 10 minutes of my video during the game. And I was emotional. I teared up. I pinched myself for three hours. I was in the Hall of Fame. Every time a legend was there, I was just pinching myself. Is this true that I'm here with you? I'm having fun with Chris Webber. I'm having fun with, uh, you know, all the other players, Tim Duncan and all that. Everybody I'm having fun with. Uh, Chris Bosch I'm having fun with. And uh, Chris Weber was telling me, nah, telling his wife, this guy used to pick on me when I used to be at the free throw. So, you know, it was all fun. And here from my gallery, you go a few feet away. It's a Kobe Bryant's gallery, the legend Kobe Bryant gallery. So it's just a, you know, it's a something which is not the, you cannot dream. And it has happened. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> That's really amazing. Just, you know, j just with the, 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 the backstory of, you know, just, just, just who you are and, and your heart for, for, for the kids, your heart for people and, and, and the way you just, you just love people. Like, the love way you just people. love people. I just love people, man. I mean, like I said, I love people. That's it. You know, give me anybody in the world, man. And I can spend the next hour talking about or take them to a game. And I tell you, they will become the biggest of the fans of the Sikhs, you know, and they'll become a big fan. You know, the first person to call me when I was uh, at the Hall of Fame, Vince Carter's mom, Michelle Carter, was the first one and said, Nav, you made us so much proud. I'm over the moon right now. Then Vince texted me. Then all the other players texted I mean, this is just amazing. You know, my... All my brothers, you know, and I always say for 48 minutes, I pick on the players who are in the opposing team. I pick on the opposing coaches. I pick on the referees at times when they don't give a right call. Uh, I don't win with them, but I do give them my <laughs> opinion that it's a wrong call. But anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is for 48 minutes, I'm competing. I'll throw the towel on the top so that they miss the free throw. But before 48 minutes and after 48 minutes, they are my brothers. I break bread with them before the game and after the game. But during 48 minutes, they are not, they are not wearing Raptors jersey. I'm on them. <laughs> oh man, I, I I love that. I, I really I really love that. And I, I don't want to don't want to take up too much of your time. So we're gonna we're, oh. we're gonna go go ahead and get get ready to wrap wrap this thing up in just 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 a little bit. And, okay. And, and and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you to the I'm gonna bring you to the two minute drill in one second. But before we get there, if if there was anybody out there and you had the opportunity to to sit down and, and and break bread with this person, right? Could be somebody living, could be somebody that's passed and gone away. Who who would you say that person would be for you? Oh my God, this is a very very touching, uh, very very touching question, you know, because. I wish I can say a lot of names, you know, I can say a lot of names. I can uh, be in the company. Uh, President Obama was one of, on my on my wish list, on my bucket, and I did that. But uh, I admire uh, Michelle Obama so much. I, 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 I admire Beyonce so much, not because she's the most beautiful girl and singer, but what she does and what she says, I, I you know, all those people, they really, you know, uh, uh, they are in my bucket list, you know. And hopefully one of these days I, I, I can uh, be with them and tell them that how much I appreciate with the things they do, you know, with the things they do. But all the people who are working, I mean, I don't have a single person, but all the people who are working for the justice for everyone all around the world, I'm with them. All the people who have helped each other during the COVID, you know, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I want to be with them. I, you know, do the COVID, 
um, in March last year, I had an opportunity because everything was stopped. So I bought a food truck and I distributed hot meals to the frontline workers. And with God's grace, I was able to distribute 15,000 hot meals to the frontline workers. So, you know, those are the things, you know, I want to uh, uh, do and uh, ha help everybody. I want to help the kids so that they can have good food to go to school. I can. I want to help. I want to do so many things in my life through social and I pray everybody. I request since I cannot do everything myself, I pray to all of you to help people around you. There is more contentment, more happiness in giving than taking. I can tell you that. And uh, just do that. And very soon this COVID will be over. Let's help each other right now. And we are going to have a lot of moments to celebrate with each other. Certainly, certainly. Uh, now we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and transition into the into the two minute drill. Okay. And... Don't be hard on me, okay? <laughs> I, I, I promise. I'll take it easy. I'll take it easy. Yeah, I'm not gonna pick easy. with you like you pick with the refs. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so the, the two minute drill, I'm going to ask you just a few rapid fire questions and we're just going to have a little bit of fun. Um, and, and, and from there, then, you know, I'll let you let you go ahead and tell people where they can connect with you and then we can we can make it on out of here. So, Nav, are you ready? Yes. All right. And here we go. Favorite food? Mexican. Mm, OK, OK. What's, what's the last book you read? I read about uh, the last book I read. It was about uh, Carter's stay in Toronto. All right, all right. Who's your favorite Raptors player of all time? Vince Carter, fifteen. Ooh, okay, okay. What's your What's your go-to television show? Uh, it's uh, basketball games. I love basketball games. I can watch three or four games, show after show after show. I can watch them. Certainly, certainly. And then, what's what's one tip you want to share with the student athletes or somebody who's competing and they're they're going through college right now? What's one tip you want to share with them? Hey, make sure work hard, live your passion, work very hard, discipline yourself. In sports, like I always say in NBA, it's very. It might be easy. It's not easy, but it could be easy to enter the nba but to stay in the nba is very difficult work hard you know and discipline yourself and treat the other people you're going to win as a team always remember don't go with your own stats you are going to win as a team and uh, if somebody is down pick them up without any condition and move on you will be blessed excellent excellent there it is there see there it is that wasn't that bad Thank you very much. Thank you very much for uh, taking easy on me. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Now, Nav, I, I, I want you just to let people know how they can, you know, connect with you and follow your journey and even see the great, the great uh, philanthropic works you're doing. Well, we have a foundation. You can reach uh, Nav Bhatia Superfan Foundation. You can uh, Google that. You can go. And also on my Instagram, it's Nav Bhatia Superfan. Go on that. Connect with me and know what we are doing and all that. If you want to be a part of it, be a part of it. Excellent, excellent. Well, now, thank you so much for, for, for being, a, being a guest today, coming on and sharing your love, sharing your story and, and sharing your passion for not only the Raptors and not only basketball, but for love. So thank you. Thank you very much. In the end, I will request everybody, keep me in your prayers and also make sure, treat everybody like you want to be treated yourself. God has made us all equal. Don't, outside, don't go with that. Somebody wearing a turban or a hijab, a white or black or brown or yellow, doesn't matter. Deep inside, we are all same and we are the product of the same Lord. Thank you very much. Thank you. And to all the ballers out there, I would encourage you all to, to definitely get, get connected with Superfan, get connected with him, uh, fo follow the work he's doing, and even check out uh, his foundation uh, and just see how you can be of support. And just like you said, if you desire to be of support, then, then be of support. But until next time, ballers, uh, this is TEDx speaker and bestselling author Jonathan Jones reminding you that this is Beyond the Ball, where we help you succeed beyond your degree.